Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about how to destroy perfectly good business. You may be in a perfectly good business. And if you are not focusing on a certain things, you could kill your business, I swear to you. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com and American Window Cleaner Magazine. And what's up? You're here. Thank you for being here. Uh, Changed up the intro. If you haven't listened, if this is your first time, we've done four years of this. Four years of this show. And we're in a very, very deep rut of how this goes. And when I try to change up the beginning, like adding the awesome American Window Cleaner magazine to the intro, I stumble. So either way, if you're here, watch. You got four years of content. Watch, binge, hundreds of episodes, all coming out every single Friday, anywhere podcasts are, YouTube, all that fun stuff. And like I said, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That is my gig. That's what I do. All day, every day. Lots of all day, every days. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I would love to be your rep. That's why I do this. Hopefully, I can help you guys out. And hopefully, if you need something, I would be there for you. Uh, but my number, it's a cell. So take it down. Grab a piece of paper. It's 862-312-2026. Go back. Listen to that number again. But it's 862-312-2026. Save my number as Jersey. And anytime you need any supplies, you can even go shopping. Throw everything in your cart. And then just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, my card is good. I have so many of you that do that, and it's absolutely amazing. It is the coolest ultimate high five ever. So thank you. And uh, if you don't even want to shop online and you're sitting in the field and you're like, hey, I need this and this and this, call me, text me, shoot me a text. Please, I beg you, all of your orders I would love. Um, shameless plug, by the way, of the first one. Uh, and then let me know, too. Right now, we are on a new iteration behind me. There. It's hiding. But let me know that you want a Cool Kid sticker, and I'll make sure to throw it in there. Um, and, uh, yeah, tell me what kind of cool, you know, uh, brand name item I can buy with all that all that money I make from your sales. So uh, let me know. And, again, on American Window Cleaner Magazine, and I messed up before, but... If you guys haven't yet, subscribe to the magazine. If you have a magazine, posters, and all these stickers are all in the magazine. There's back issues, there's bundles, there's all that stuff at awcmag.com. But go and get a subscription. It's right there on the site. It's super cheap. But you get a paper subscription all about window cleaning. Right to your door every single month. So go do that. That's it. Shameless plug is over, or my intro sucks. Usually takes uh, two, three minutes, by the way. So uh, three minutes if you've skipped. Welcome to the episode. Uh, And today we are talking about how to destroy a perfectly good business. Now, in business, a lot of times people always want to talk about wins, right? Do this and you'll succeed. Do this and you'll... But there's something more importantly about learning what not to do. And now, remember, I'm just some dummy that has a MacBook that I record into and this this weird light that's right here, right? So I'm nobody. It doesn't matter what I say, but let's talk. There are some things, and this is not a complete list. There's a lot of things you can do to kind of destroy your business. And everybody's a little bit different as far as like what they do to what, you know, is not a good option for them. And what can ultimately destroy a business? I've seen this happen a dozen times where people have a really, really good business and they like grow too fast. They don't do things right. They lose track of what actually it means to be a business. And I know people. I know people who, you know, they're a one man show and they're they're talking about this $3 million bid that they just, uh, they just put in for, you know. Like people are like trying to take up these uh, giant city contracts. You're like, oh, I'll have to hire though. Yeah, but the contract, the contract is like up in, you know, they, they choose in two weeks and then you have six weeks to do the job. Like you're a one man show. What are you doing? So there's a way to grow too fast and there's an unhealthy way to do it. But there's a lot of things that you can lose sight of that more importantly will destroy a business. 
growing unhealthily sucks. Sometimes you have to do it depending on the season. You have to get back on track, right? That's for a whole nother episode, by the way, is growing unhealthily. But the big things that I notice that kill a business, number one on my list, usually it's backwards, you gotta wait till the end to get the, no, number one's right now, it's knowing everything. If you know everything in the industry, if you are so stubborn headed that you know everything, you're gonna, you're gonna fail your business. You're gonna, if at the least, you get stuck. You're gonna get stuck where you are. Destroying a business, destroying the growth happens when people stop thinking they need to learn anything. I get this all the time. And if you guys are watching, if any of you are uh, stubborn, cool. Like, I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm just talking about the ideal that dinosaurs die. Now, let me explain that. If you come into this and you say, hey, for the past 20 years, I've done X, Y, Z. And there's something new out there, like, that's stupid. Okay, you don't have to do everything that is new and, and, and you know, new age, if you will. Because not everything is awesome. And the grass is not greener on the other side all the time. But if you say that stuff doesn't work, that's stupid. Guys who do that aren't real window cleaners. I'm here to tell you that your mindset is going to destroy your business. You may say, um, I'm doing just fine and I've thought this way. Okay, cool. Guaranteed, you're not even a fraction of the company you could have been by having an open mind on the industry. Things change so fast in our industry, so fast. You're missing the boat on things like new equipment, new technologies, new processes. New, you know, ways to to do things. I know guys that are still running on, um, what are they called? Index cards. They're not even using CRMs. Oh, that's the best way to do it. Okay, that's cool. You can't scale a company on index cards. You got to get into technology. Some of you are not using, say, Responsibid, right? Uh, by the way, uh, if I remember, I will remember, I promise. In this, there's a link to responsive if you want to try it. But I'm just throwing that out there as a technology. Some of you are not having a presence out there. Maybe some of you don't even have a website. And if you do, it's garbage. There's so many things out there that people kind of miss. And I always want to talk about the the, the tools because that's what I hear the most. You know, people like Waterfed's fake. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, you're not a real window cleaner. That stuff drives me nuts because it's so absolutely absurd. But if you're stuck in your mindset, you're not even open to allowing the new technologies, the new equipment, the new processes, the new program. Software is absolutely, absolutely mind-blowing. The amount of work that can come from having a company like uh, Monk SEO or something where you have a website, they basically get the website out there, is mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. I'm talking thousands of thousands and thousands of dollars in more work every month you could land from this. Imagine if you did that for the past five years. Imagine if you could do that for the next year. People are, oh, I don't want to spend money on that stupid. People find me. I don't need to advertise. That's cool. If you are that company who never advertises, you're happy being exactly where you are, your customers will still die off. You still need to have something. You need to make those customers stronger. You have customers that may not be super awesome. You got to make sure that that gets back up to par, right? If you're trying to grow and you're in a growth season, that's when you do everything that makes sense. There's just so many pieces to the puzzle that you have to get on board. You can't have a closed mindset. I spent too much time on that, by the way. But that's the truth. Don't have a closed mindset. Don't have a closed mindset. Try the new software programs. Try... Uh, getting an amazing website built. Try having it SEO'd. Put Responsibid on an SEO'd site. Uh, go and use new CRMs. Use a customer factor. Use a, uh, a jobber or a something. Use technology in your benefit and you are going to be these companies. I know companies who have healthily, healthily got to a million dollars in like three to five years. 
Not saying that's going to happen to you. Maybe it's not your, even your market possible. But I know companies that have done that. I personally talk to companies that are at those numbers. It's absolutely mind-blowing. But if you close yourself off and think that everything you're doing is absolutely right, you will only be exactly where you are. You'll destroy your business if you clo keep a closed mind. So open that up anyway. Another big thing people do is focus on price. Now, you you can't not see it at least a little bit. You got to kind of know that you're, you know, if you're charging $300 for a window, you're not going to get any work. I understand that. I'm not saying be absurd. What I'm saying is, is if you're focused on price over value, you're not going to even get close to where you are. You're going to affect the market and you're going to be known as that cheap guy. You're not going to ever be super successful and you're never going to really scale making, you know, $30 an hour. You're just not. Don't focus on price. Know when you work your numbers that you should be between $75 and $100 a man hour in Windows. Some of you, I talk to, again, quite frequently, will tell me things like, oh, no, like I could do like $35, $40 an hour. That's like max in my area. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong because you've never tried to do more. Or you have tried to do more and you were so... Um, wavering on your like um 400 uh, like you're the professional don't focus on price focus on value no one again we're, we're talking lamborghinis lamborghini does not have a memorial day sale save 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 you know here's a coupon for your lamborghini nobody does that you want a lamborghini you buy a lamborghini you don't question the price. You don't buy the Ferrari over the Lamborghini because of the price. You buy it because of the value that it brings. Right? Refocus on what you're doing value over price. Price is just not a big deal. If you are more expensive than the other guy, which everybody claims to be, by the way. Nobody wants to be known as the cheap guy, but a lot of you have to be. By the way, that's one thing people will say, well, I'm not the cheapest. And then they'll come to supplies and be like, well, this other company is $3 cheaper. I'm going with them. And I get it. It's cool. It's whatever. But that just means you don't see our value. And I did something wrong. That you're not getting the value from me, right? If you're not buying from me, which is cool. Obviously, we can't win them all. But I haven't showed you the value and what I'm bringing to the table to have you buy through me, right? Same thing with your company. If you're scared of the price you're not going to show the value. You and I know you're the best choice, right? If there's 10 of you lined up, you know undoubtedly in your head, I'm the best choice. Why? If you know you're the best, convey it to somebody else. Nobody ever, not ever in any product ever has said, hey, this is the best because it's the cheapest. All 10 of these items, this is the cheapest. That makes it the best. Never. Why are you doing that, right? Another one's not focusing on the presence you have. A lot of times, people get to a certain point, they get very complacent, right? They stop their sales or SEOs or whatever. They go, well, I'm here. Well, you're going to drop off that, right? I don't know how many people I've talked to, but like, oh, man. 2019 we were like number one. Uh, oh where are you now ah, i'm not sure i haven't checked in a while like you're not even on page one you don't stay king you work to be king right the number one player in the nfl trains as much as possible because if he just took like eh, a week a couple weeks months off he wouldn't be the best he just wouldn't be the best because everybody else is going to pass him. It's always a struggle. Imagine a giant sand, uh, a pile of sand, and you're trying to get to the top. If you just get to the top and you stop, you're going to start sliding all the way back down. You have to keep moving towards the top. You have to. You have to. Focus on your presence. Focus on your reviews. Don't get to a point like, I got reviews. You need new reviews every single job. Every single other job. You should be getting hundreds of reviews. You should be. 
It's just what has to happen. That takes active work, if you will, to get. By the way, uh, talking programs, because I've thrown out a lot of names. Uh, uh, good job. Yes, good job. Awesome program. Uh, that is a review collecting program. You enter some information for your jobs when you do them, and they send emails and prompts and links, and they get the reviews. And that is why the companies that are out there with 500 reviews exist. It's because of companies like that. Reviews are so important in today's market. You got to be out there. SEO is so important. All this stuff is, is so important to kind of the big picture. When you stop, that's when you head towards killing a perfectly good company, right? Another one I see a lot is not advertising when you're busy. So you've heard the whole saying, you know, I'm big on cliches and metaphors and all that. But you've heard the saying, uh, strike while the iron's hot. And we've talked about why is the gum in a grocery store, you walk in the checkout lane and as you're standing there, you have all that stuff right there. Nobody goes to the grocery store to buy one candy bar, right? You go to a gas station or something. But they sell a lot of gum and a lot of candy bars because they got to strike while the iron's hot. Standing there waiting, like, ah, my breath is, oh, gum. Be there when somebody is ready. And you have to. The big thing is people want to advertise when it's slow. Oh man, we need to get something in. We got to get some advertising out there. Nobody wants a cheeseburger if they're vegan. Nobody wants to, you know, get a discount buffet if they're not hungry. If somebody's on their way to work, they're not going to stop off and watch a movie. No matter what the advertising is, no matter what the dollar amount is, it's not right. But say six o'clock on a Friday night. Guess what? Lots of people, lots of people could be uh, persuaded to go watch a movie, right? When do you think all of their ad dollars are? It's when people want to watch a movie, right? If you are watching TV, if you're still watching over the air TV, <laughs> anything with commercials, if you're watching something at dinner time, you're going to see a bunch of commercials for restaurants, food, fast food, food. Because they're like, people are hungry, let's get it to them, right? Advertise directly to the people when they need it. That is missed on window cleaning. A lot of times people go, well, I'm so busy, I got to turn off my ads. Wrong. So stupid, don't do that. Because all the new people that you could touch that are actually going to buy, your ROI is so much higher, you get more bang for your buck, you can then put them in the schedule. If somebody calls you, oh my gosh, I'm so busy right now, A, maybe it's time you need to hire somebody if you're going that route. But B is maybe, I'm recording this, uh, we'll say um, March, but actually this is February. Um, but say you're, you're doing this, you're advertising now, it happens to be hot and it's May. You don't get to do somebody until June, right? Maybe July. You still are booking the people when they want to be booked. Now, the service isn't happening when they want it to be happening. That's why you should hire and get that, you know, getting kicked out a little bit farther. But strike while the iron is hot. If you don't, if you turn off ads, if you um, stop, uh, again, we talked a lot about SEO. I don't want to keep draining on that one, but uh, it does shock me how many people don't focus on that. But I know a lot of people who will turn their SEO off over the winter. I don't have the money to, what? You just stopped everything that you did to try to keep going in that sand pile and now you're just falling back down because it's winter? doesn't make sense. I know people who turn off uh, click ads and Facebook ads and promotions and all that stuff in the middle of their busy season. People are searching. In in spring, they're searching for window cleaning more than every other time of the year, probably combined. Why would you not advertise when people are looking? You're going to go and take those same advertising dollars and try to put it out in January? It just does not work. That's one way to kill a business. You kill the growth. If you kill the growth of a business, you're going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. People that want to have giant growth numbers also don't hit growth numbers because they do things the incorrect way. 
If you're trying to grow, don't tell me, oh, I don't want to grow too fast, so that's why I turned off my ads. That's wrong. That's not too fast. You're doing it dumb. You're just you're doing it the wrong way. Growing too fast. There is no too fast in the speed at which it grows. It's growing too fast, meaning your growth outperforms or, or is more than your uh, capabilities to do that work. If you grow and all of a sudden you land that $1 million, $3 million contract and you're a one-man show, in order to do that in two weeks, you need to hire like 10 people. It's not possible. It's not going to be good. You're going to have 10 new people that just suck and you're going to lose that contract and you're going to kill yourself because you'll never, ever, ever, ever be able to do that contract again because it was out of your league in the first place. Stuff like that is growing too fast. It's growing wrong. But you can't grow too fast if you're doing it smoothly. If for some reason the economy was was good again and everything else and you could hire people on a dime, really good people, say you had a pool, you had 20 experienced window cleaners standing right there who were all amazing, waiting to get hired. If your trucks, you just happen to have ton, 10 brand new trucks all set up and equipped, sitting there. If you had $2 million in the bank to be able to invest in your company, then there is no growing too fast. You could grow hundreds of thousands of dollars a month if you wanted if you could grow with it. So there is no growing too fast. It's just growing too fast compared to what you're able to do, right? Don't stop advertising when it's busy. Don't turn off your SEO. Don't shoot yourself in the foot and not look at the big picture. By the way, growth on just another one. As you grow, it's you're continually going. You're continually feeding a beast that is going to continue. Like you could have the biggest dog on the planet. If you stop feeding the dog, it dies. It doesn't matter how big it is. It doesn't matter how small it is. It matters how much you're feeding it. You got to feed a big dog way more than a little chihuahua. But no matter what, if you stop feeding it, if you stop feeding your beast, it dies. It just does. No one anywhere ever has been at a... Um, at a uh, 100% retention. It just has never, ever been that way, right? So you have to continue to go that way. Don't be booked out too far. We kind of touched on this a second ago, but people who are, it is February, and they're booked out through July and August. What? No one, no one wants to, some people will, but no one wants to, oh, my windows are dirty. Yeah, I'll get them done in six months. They want it now. It's time to hire. Do not push out that far. You're just stopping yourself. You're stopping yourself. It's like taking, you know, a, a sports car. You can take the fastest sports car in the world or the slowest car. If you put them in a tennis court, there's only so fast you're going to go because you're going to have to stop again or try to turn around. If you're stopping, Closing off what you can do, that's what you can do is what you have. If you're booked out too far, you, people, you're losing so much new work. Somebody calls you and you go, yeah, absolutely. I heard so many great things. Oh, yeah, I can get you in July 7th. Oh, well, let me, uh, you're losing. You'll never get that person back because they're going to remember. I call these guys, they're just like too busy, right? It's the same thing the people that you did lose who got you when you were smaller, now all of a sudden feel like they're not getting like, oh, hey, uh, just a question. How come you didn't use this again? Uh, I just, you know, I kind of felt that you guys were just getting a little bit too big to kind of have that personal feel, you know. It's the same problem, but on either end. Don't be bucked out too far. If you're not hiring people, then I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice, but there's no wrong way. If you don't want to hire people and you're booked out that far, cool, that's awesome. If you do have employees and you're booked out that far, that is your fault. That is not a successful like, oh man, I'm doing so good. No, that means that what you're doing in business, you're not growing your company to match your growth. It's just the wrong way. It's unhealthy. Don't do that. I love when people are booked out, I'm talking weeks, maybe a month, but this stuff that people are booked out three months, 
I'm sorry. It's just such a bad, bad idea. Now, again, I always have that sale. If I tell somebody, that, oh, you know, I'm going to look around. Just, oh, just so you know, uh, being that it's a bu- our busy time, I can actually take $50 off your cleaning if we put you in July, you know, 7th, whatever their slow time is. Uh, I do like that. And that does not mean you're booked out to July. That means that you've helped those people save money by filling that slow time, right? Now, if it was June and you're booked out through the slow time in July, that's awesome. But being booked out three months, the next three months you're booked, you have to hire and grow. Like all those new customers, you're just slowing down. You, you just put a cast on the leg of the runner, right? You got a running back. It doesn't matter how fast that running back could be. If you put a cast on their leg, they're just, they're capped. They can only do so much. Don't do that. Another thing people don't do, and they focus more on the gross numbers, by the way, gross is for you guys, right? If I tell you my gross, it's till I can press you. I shouldn't care about gross. I should more care about profits. Because say I'm making $100,000 in profit. It does not matter if I'm doing that in a million dollars or I'm doing that in $200,000. If that's my gross, a million or $200,000, I'm profiting $100,000. I'm making the same amount of money. Now, technically, it does matter when you look at well, I'm spending a lot more time and resources to make a million dollars to get a hundred thousand. I have more gap. I could tighten things up and make that run smoother and be more efficient, more profitable. But I'm talking about actual profits. If you're actually profiting a hundred thousand dollars, the gross really doesn't matter when it comes to that because that's the number that means that goes into your business's pocket, right? Obviously, you can work on efficiencies. Obviously, you can tighten things up. Obviously, blah blah blah. But when it comes to that number, that's your number. If you keep an eye on profits, you can really see how comfortable your company is. I've had deconstructions I've done on companies. I haven't had one in probably probably two years. But I've had companies where I totally um, put everything down. We broke down the company. We learned profits. We pulled P&Ls. And you find out that they're profiting like... $3,800. I had one company that was profiting $3,800. They were doing like 600000 that year, six something, just under six, I think. And they were profiting under $5,000. What the heck? However, would you, why, how would, why? What would, how do you make it through winter? You're profiting $3,000. Well, you know, I pay myself a lot. You know, I take a lot of the money back out of it. And we advertise a ton. Okay, but profits still have to be there. You have to still have a profitable company because otherwise you're just creating a job for yourself, right? Anyway, I'm not getting into that on my high horse, but there's something to look at. Focus on profit because profit is absolutely in, in, in important to your company. And the last thing is just don't get caught up in the competition. Again, I love my analogies. You know this. Here's an analogy for you. Look at your windshield when you get in your car. All of your windshield is looking forward, except this little mirror in the middle. The little mirror in the middle allows you to look backwards, but not focus behind you. Your car wants you to focus on what's in front of you, right? What's in front of you can kill you, can be smooth can have no traffic, lots of traffic. You need to focus on what's in front of you, but you do need to glance at what's behind you every now and then. Same thing with competition. People tend to focus on what everybody else is doing and then tries to compete with everybody else in their heads. Oh, uh, Tom up the street, he's charging like, you know, $20 a, uh, a window. I'm going to be at uh, 15. Why? What, what are you doing? What does Tom offer? right? Ah, Tom's guys are always, you know, they're always doing this. They're always doing that. How does that affect you? It affects Tom and Tom's company, but focus on your value, focus on your crew, focus on everything that you do over what they're doing. If you focus at what they're doing, the problem is, is you lose sight of what you're doing. Again, if you stare at that rear view mirror the whole time, guess what? You rear in the car in front of you. 
If you're watching your competition, you're focused on what they're doing and it affects them. Right? The big thing is, is in advertisement, obviously you want to see if somebody advertises window cleaning, get your summers, blah, 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 blah. No matter where it is, people will look at that. Not everybody will call that company. They'll go back and just search window cleaning. So even if they're advertising, doesn't mean you should not advertise. It means that some of that is even going to come to you as long as your SEO is on point. So why focus on anything they're doing? Why focus on their staff? Why focus on what they're doing? Glance at it. See where you are. Oh, that's a good idea. Or, oh, they don't offer this. I'm offering this. Increasing your value by looking at them. But don't focus on the competition. I'm telling you, you can really destroy a perfectly good business if you don't focus on what helps you. So, anyway, there you go. Rant is done. Back to my shameless plugs. My number, 862-312-2026. And yes, I want to be a rep for absolutely everything. I even see some of you guys coming in uh, and I see the names come across. I'm like, oh, I didn't get to put the order in. I make it so simple. Literally, you could call me, text me. All I'll do is be like, oh, is your address one, two, three? And you'll say, yeah, and I'll run it. So simple. I get credit. costs you nothing extra, not a penny more. And uh, I get cheddar for it. And I get to live another day. <laughs> get the American Window Cleaner magazine also if you haven't checked it out or even seen it look at American Window Cleaner magazine for under a cup of coffee a day you, I don't know I haven't done the, the math on that but in the magazine there's a ton of awesome journalists there's posters because why not you want to like take posters and and put them up you want stickers that have the industry like, we're in a culture you get to be part of the culture so do that awcmag.com forward slash sub thanks and uh we will see you again next week go out there and don't destroy your business but more importantly go out there and be epic <laughs>